Okay, everybody says customs. Today we're going to have a look at the Bilby software. Now, what is the Bilby software? Well, basically, it's a cloud based system that you can send your printers from your laptop, your phone, anywhere in the world to your printer and start it remotely. Now, there's a huge um, database of got of printers that work. Now, these are just some of them here. You've got your, your normal, you know, your end of threes, end of fives. So it's all your basic stuff that's on the market. Um, anything that's not there, there's probably someone who's already made a profile for it, or you can contact them and they can help you get it set up. So you can see it's still going, still going, it's a big list. So as you can see here, if you didn't find your printer, you can tell them about it and they can set it up pretty easy. So we're gonna go into the support, download, and then under here it's got your installation, installation guide. Um, so this is to set up the program itself for your desktop. Um, otherwise, you can get an app for your phone as well, which is just called Build Box, I believe it was called. So getting started, you're gonna obviously you're gonna need the program itself. Now you can download it for Windows and Mac, but there is also a application for your phone. I know it's on Android. I believe it'll be on Apple as well. Uh, it's pretty simple to install, as you can see here. Otherwise, you can just run it straight from your browser, which is how we tend to do it most of the time. Um, Obviously, this is going through connecting it to it, but before you can connect to it, you need to get your cloud dock installed. Okay, so here's here's some of the information about your cloud dock. Now, your cloud dock dock is built around a Raspberry Pi, so if anyone's got uh, OctoPrint, they'll sort of be familiar with it. There is a plugin for OctoPrint as well, so that it'll turn into the BuildB cloud dock, which is very easy. Uh, we're not going to go through installing it. Uh, we found this pretty straightforward to follow. Good information, so anyone should be able to get through this and have no issues. So once you've got that, that's when you jump back into your program. Um, we'll give you a quick show. Obviously, we've already got our printer set up, but we're going to just pretend we've got another printer. Enter three. Uh, we'll give it a name. Uh, pretty much print face. You know, pretty much print face. Go to next, and here you can actually um, connect it via USB, but obviously most people now want their printers wireless, so you would be collecting the Raspberry Dock, and you go through here. We're not going to be able to go all the way through this, but uh, once you've got your Raspberry Pi set up, this section of it is quite easy to get through. Um, you shouldn't have any issues. If you do, you can contact them. They'll walk you straight through it. They're very good. So we close that back off. So. Now we're going to show you a little bit about the um, sort of the software side behind it. Uh, as you can see, there's some of the prints that we've already done previously. A uh, great range of models that are pre-uploaded that have been tested that work. And then some of the models that have been shared. Like I said, good range of models pre-uploaded that you don't need to download. Okay, so we're going to show you some of the other functions now. So here you can upload your 3D model as you would, you know, if it was off Thingiverse or you know anywhere else you've got it from. Uh, you can print the 3D photo called a lithophane, which is quite popular. You know, it's a good thing when anyone getting started to do. So we're gonna have a quick look at that. Let's pull up an image. So you can see here, it gives you a little preview. That's the image there of my son with a balloon. Uh, you've got a few different types of um, ones you can do. We tend to go with uh, sort of like an outer curve pillow. And it outer curve generates it nice and quick. Oops, sorry, not used to the software yet. And as you can see, there's the image there. Um, might be a little bit hard to see. You can see the details and what it does, how much it pops out, you know. It's hard to get an idea of how it's meant to look until you've done a few of them that how well it's going to come out. It doesn't look like much, but once you print this behind, put this behind some light, it just pops. So at this point here, you can actually scale it if you want. You know, it's a click and drag, easy to scale to whatever size you want. Probably maybe not that small. So that's one function. Click on that. This is some uh, testing ones we did earlier. We're just going to close that. Uh, there's a, a lot already in the gallery you can choose from, which is good to see. Makes it nice and easy. It's a bit of all sorts there. Uh, what are we going to pick? 
put this frog, put in the frog in, you're going to hit next, and then you can determine how big you want it, but we're just going to leave it as it is, generate, and there's our frog, very easy. Oh, we're looking the right way, there's the frog there. Now another cool function is, so if we delete this, if we hit add, go back to the cookie cutters, it'll still have that one there. Right, so you can actually add some test and go frog. As you can see, it's off to the side. So when you hit next, you notice there's a tick here called connect a loose part. So you hit OK. It's um, connected all of that. The font might look a bit funny. Should have probably got a little bit bigger maybe on that font. But if we scale it back up a little bit, yeah, can't actually read it. Now let's, let's have another go at that. Okay, so that works. So we'll just drag it up bigger again. Oops. Just don't think it liked the text for some reason. Um, so I'm still not quite used to the uh, how everything works on the software. Okay, so you can see that got the frog, got the word frog next to it. So quick and easy way to make a cookie cutter. All right, so parts library. There's not not too much to show here. These are sort of designed for like board games and stuff. Um, there was print one that we printed quite often. Anyone who's new to printing, test cube. Uh, so the good thing with this, it's meant to measure out 20 by 20 by 20. You can measure it after it's printed to make sure you've got your machine calibrated. Uh, 2D image. Uh, this just brought back up, back up the one that we've done the cookie cutter. So we're just going to use this. Hit OK. As you can see, it extrudes it out. And it rounds it for the corners. The only problem is with the eyes. They're not joined. But that's the only thing with this. But it's good for logos. As you can see, it sort of rounds everything off nicely. Um, tabletop base. Sort of. These are just basically bases for models. Uh, there was one here that we found. If um, your makerspace or your school or someone knew had a 3D scanner, uh, you could scan your own head. Still not, still not used to this. Okay, there we go. Um, so you could scan it and put your own head on here if you really wanted to. So that's something you could do. And then we look at the QR generator. Uh, this is where you can put in a website. Well, I think there's some other options. Yeah, email, phone, SMS, Wi-Fi. Obviously, for your Wi-Fi code, uh, that could be cool in a school environment now with every you know everyone needing connections to Wi-Fi. Um, we're just going to do a URL to our website. See, it was jumbling all the squares around. Hit OK, and this is the QR code. Now, with this, you almost need to print it one color and then paint it, and then sort of sand back the first layer. So there's um, it sort of it sort of pops a bit more. We did a few tests, and we didn't really get many good results just printing it on one color. So I think that's something you'd need to do with multiple colors. And then finally, we've got this. Um, We've had no success with this. Uh, we've tried using their sort of default ones that they're trying to pre-do. Uh, don't need to stand. Just build the tile. And it's meant to generate the like where you're located, so you can pull up your latitude, longitude off Google Maps. But like I said, we've had no success with this, so we're going to try what the default is. Okay, so we're going to jump back to the home page now and show you how easy it is to get a print started. So we're going to click on the Pikachu here, click next, you know, click on the printer that you set up. Now there's a couple of different uh, materials here. If you click on the exclamation mark or the question mark next to it, it gives you an idea of what your print temps are. So for most parts, you know, just PLA. Um, you can set up custom profiles. We've had a play with that, but we found good results on these. Uh, obviously we don't need support. Leave the brim on, click next. Uh, you can preview the print if you like. It takes a few seconds for it to load up. And there's your Pikachu. See the brim around the feet. Drag down and you can see the infill. And it's going to tell you here how long it's going to take and how much filament it's going to use. So you're going to hit print. Confirm that your print bed's clear. And it analyzes the model and starts the print. Now, there was one thing we found with our machine having a BL touch that normally you're meant to put.
preheat your bed. Obviously, you're going to preheat your bed regardless, but it doesn't do any preheating as such. It it pretty much starts printing straight away. Like it does wait for your print to get up to temp, but it doesn't it doesn't allow the bed to sort of heat soak as much as I normally would, especially with a big glass bed on the Tevo Tornado. So that'd be a nice feature to maybe have have an option to preheat before actually getting into the print. So it's pretty easy though to set it through. You leave it, it starts straight away. Um, this is your camera mode. If you had a camera hooked up, if you had it hooked up to a computer, you could watch the print, but obviously we don't have it. So we're just gonna stop this because we've already printed this. And this is the print here. Now it's it came out pretty good. We had a little bit of stringing between the ears. Uh, there's one function that you can't actually really adjust, and that's your retraction settings, which would that's what a lot of it is, is retraction. Um, a little bit can be the temperature, but for the most part it's retraction, which you have no access to. So whatever the default's set up to, that's it. Um, I think it's mainly because this is designed for printers that are sort of off, you know, straight out of the box, no upgrades. I've obviously done a few upgrades to mine and been able to really dial it in a little bit more. So that's something that'd be nice to possibly be added as an advanced feature. And we also printed this uh, bench in he benchy here, you know, it's a staple of any printer. Um, it's done a pretty good job of it. Uh, there was, there's a little bit less um, stringing on this than the Pikachu for some reason, but it, we're very happy with the result. Now, if you guys are interested in this, this is the pricing. Uh, this is a broken down into US dollars. For us, we're in Australia, so this is what it is Australian. Uh, you've got your basic one for one user. You can save up the five models to the cloud but you can only print five items a month. So if that's something that's not quite ideal to you, that one might not be for you. But for 745 a month, you're unlimited everything. Um, you do get your live stream video as well, which your free doesn't get, which it's still been developed. So until it can work via the Raspberry Pi, um, I won't be using it. And then obviously here you've got educational ones, so it's going to be your schools, it's going to be your maker spaces, anything like that. Uh, obviously everything's going to be unlimited once again, but it does limit your models per user, but 100 models a user is, is plenty. So there is also a free trial that they offer, um, if you guys want to try it before you buy it. Um, Obviously, it's going to be the right sort of person to get this. Uh, maybe if someone more experienced, it may not be ideal. Maybe for an, in a printing farm environment, but a lot of people want a little bit more adjustability to their machines before they do that, especially when a printing farm, you've got multiple different machines as well. Um, so they also do have a shop here. I believe it's only located in the American store. I don't think you can get it here in Australia. But if you, you know one stop, especially at school, you want to buy multiple printers, they can help you with the printers, they can help you with the cloud docs, they can help you with everything to get you started. Uh, good range of different printers that everyone's sort of familiar with. Um, you've also got your filaments, good range of colors, PG, silk, you know, and then you've got some of the fancy thermatics. So it changes the color with a different heat. It's very cool. We got sparkly. Actually, looking at this, they may actually have Australian because CCDIY is Australian, so you can get some Australian stuff, which is good to see. And then for those wanting the printers, they want the filament. Um, they've got they list a lot here to a different Amazon links. So to get started, ones that they recommend that are supported by their software as well. So you won't get caught out getting a printer that just won't work. Um, you've got your PLA, PLA Plus, PETG, Silk Silvers, and you know more special stuff, accessories. You know, this is a merch if you want a nice cup or whatever. Um, so. We think it's a really good software for anyone getting into it. It sort of takes the barriers down a little bit from having to learn the hard stuff of Kira. Obviously, at a later point, they're going to want to jump into Kira. They're going to want to jump into Fusion and design your own stuff. But this is a good platform for anyone getting started with printing um, and wanting to sort of learn without having too much 
to try to you know cram in at once so so thanks again to Bill B for reaching out to us letting us have a play with this software uh, obviously it's probably not ideal for any experienced users but we wanted to view it as being able to teach you know the younger people or even the older people that are getting into it how to use the software so thanks again till the next video have a good one